Uh, good morning, Dr. Jeannie. Good morning, uh, Alexis. It's been, uh, it's hard to believe that the retreat is just around the corner. We've been planning this for a long time. And uh, I really am looking forward to welcome you back to Birmingham, Alabama. I'm looking forward to it very, very much. You have a lot of fans here. They listen to your um, podcast on Monday night, Search the Scriptures Live. The uh, book is in the bookstore. People have been buying that and, and trying to prepare for your visit. And what I want to ask you today is, why is this orthodox mindset, the phronema, such an important topic right now? It's important for a number of reasons. First of all, because when the Lord uh, was teaching the apostles, he didn't leave behind a set of writings or a manual or something like this. He gave them beliefs about himself, knowledge of himself, participation in his life, and the knowledge of a certain way of life. This is what the apostles transmitted to the first Christians. And this is what the Orthodox Church continues to live by. So the book Thinking Orthodox is about our phronema. So phronema is not just the way we think, but also how we behave. Because the way we think does impact the way we behave and vice versa when we act in a certain manner that also affects our attitude so we're talking about the attitude of a christian now all christians have a certain common ideas and understanding of what they're supposed to be like as christians but orthodoxy is different from the west because the orthodox church has maintained the thought of the early church and this is what saint paul used to call the mind of christ and it's very different, not only from Western Christianity, but especially from the world in which we live. We don't really think about it, but we're very impacted by our culture. We watch television shows, we're exposed to music and movies and commercials and signs, and everything gives us a message. This message is coming from the world, and usually it's quite the opposite of what God wants from us and what God wants us to focus on, how we can be more Christ-like. Beautiful. Um, I've looked at the, at the agenda. We've talked about it. Three talks, uh, why be orthodox, mm -hmm. um, thinking orthodox, and then living orthodox. What is your hope for participants um, who come to the retreat and, and hear these three talks and discussions, what, it, what would you like for them to come away with? Well, I would like them to come away with a better understanding of how the Orthodox Church, its thought process, its message, its way of life is compatible with what Christ was uh, conveying in the New Testament. And also not only compatible, but reflects truly what Christ was saying in the New Testament. And um, is, I hope that it will give people something to think about so that as we walk through our daily life, we will begin to try to imitate Christ more closely, try to live a Christian life. And it's not just about, I think, I think sometimes we get into this mentality that um, living the Christian life is about doing certain things, accomplishing certain things. I'm going to check this off my list. I have to give to the poor and I have to, you know, fast or I have to go to church or this, there's these, we treat it like it's, it's a list. It's a to-do list for getting into the kingdom of heaven. And actually it's not like that. It's, it's the transformation of the whole human person. Everything about us should be different from the rest of the world. And um, that requires a shift in our attitude, in our thinking. So it's, it's a very, very difficult topic to condense. I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to sort of convey the general idea, but it's really hard to talk about how people think, but we're, we don't think about how we're thinking and how we're thinking affects everything else in our life. For many converts, they see something about the Orthodox Church and they recognize that it is something that they really want and that's different from what they have been raised with. And, um, but they can't really put their finger on it. 
Orthodox Christians who have been raised in the church also have a lot of difficulty defining what makes Orthodoxy different. So I'm not trying to say we're like this and you're like that, but I'm just trying to give people a language and the concepts so that they can understand what differentiates the Orthodox Church from every other church and why that matters. So again, it's not like from a position of superiority that we have something and you guys are, are nothing and not like that at all, but simply to explain ourselves to, uh, to those who are not Orthodox and sometimes even to explain ourselves to ourselves. Because like I said, we don't think about our thoughts. We just know that there's something different about orthodoxy, but we can't really explain it. So this is what um, I hope to present in a kind of a nutshell on uh, that weekend, the first weekend of, um, of March, and also to give people sort of a deeper, once they understand what's different about the orthodox approach to life, to salvation, to our relationship to God, I'm hoping that it will deepen their uh, relationship with the Lord and strengthen them in their spiritual journey. Which is at such a uh, crucial time right here on, uh, it'll be Forgiveness Sunday weekend. Yes. We'll uh, yes. be entering Clean Monday, uh, the day after the right. retreat. So I think That's this is right. the, the right time for you to come and a topic that is going to carry us through the next four Yes, years. it has. It has very wide reaching ramifications. It's not like an obvious, obvious Lenten topic, but it it's because it's our attitude and our way of life. It's not only for Lent, but for all the time, all, every day of the year. But because during Lent, we tend to focus on our spiritual life. That's why it's a very appropriate topic as we launch into Lent. And I'm, I'm looking forward to Forgiveness Sunday too. Father Gregory asked me to preach the sermon. So I'm thinking about that also. That, that might just make that my focus. That's going to be wonderful. Thank well, you. thank you, uh, Dr. Jeannie. Well, thank you. I'll see you on next Friday. Yes, I'm looking forward to it so much. I, I, it's been a very long time since I visited Birmingham and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody there. God bless you all. See you then, God willing. Thank you so much. Thank you.